Good morning, gamers. What's good, man? It's Red K. I'm the loneliest wolf by choice. Thanks for joining us. Today's date is March the 31st. Bunch of stories to get into. And uh, the first one, uh, we got a trailer for a game that I am super excited about. This is like, uh, Lone Wolf, I don't even know if we ever actually told you about this, but I, on my uh, regular, was it Nintendo? Yeah, my regular Nintendo. No, this was a sick, I can't even remember. Blaster Master. Nintendo, right? Uh, ooh, Blaster Master. You got you got I, in the truck and you got out the truck and you had like yeah I was, think it, it was I, I think that was Nintendo. It was I want to say Nintendo. that was Nintendo. So I heard about this a uh, couple months ago. Uh, Blaster Master Zero Three. Uh, so as soon as I saw Blaster Master, I was like, yeah, I'm down. Give it to me right now. Uh, I think it's gonna be available on the Switch as well. But we got a trailer, and uh, it looks it looks like Blaster Master. So uh, check this out. Sunsoft presents the final piece of a trilogy. It's so yeah. embarks on a brand new adventure. It's Blaster Master. The side view and top down action is more intense than ever before. Jason's third battle against mutant kind is about to begin. He looks dope now. The pinnacle of mutant blasting action is here. Blaster Master Snow 3. A new chapter in Blaster Master history unfolds. So I don't know if you ever got into Blaster Master, man, but back in the day, this game. So you would start off, basically you're... You, you're told your pet frog uh, went to another dimension. You followed him. You got this space suit and this truck that you found, like this, uh, this, your, your blast master, like your vehicle you would get in. And you got in the vehicle and then you would go, it was like left to right Metroidvania style before I even knew what <laughs> Metroidvania was. And um, on the like NES and like you would get updates, you would get like different fireballs. You would have levels that you would go through with the truck, but then you would get out the truck and be this little guy and you would go into like these houses or these like uh, uh, caves and everything. And then you have battles inside there with, uh, it was, it for the NES days, it was super, super cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you ever got on it. Nah, uh, I, I remember seeing the title, but uh, as a kid, uh, I had uh, I had to be very selective of what games I did and I didn't get. So if it wasn't something that I was really like vibing with, I would pass it over for something else that I was more vibing with. But I do remember seeing the title uh, a bunch when I was younger. It was one of those. Uh, it was one of those games where the title got you more than the actual game. It was like Blaster Master, and then you would look at the back of the box and it was like, "Oh, this looks colors and shit." So, I was, you know, it was really dope, that you know? was that was not me. That was not me at all. Uh, like titles were okay for some of the stuff, but it was more like, "What does the game look like?" As well as what does it kind of like play like? I generally stuck with a uh, uh, a specific type of genre of game. What was your first? Uh, what was your first system? My first system was uh, an NES. It was the first system we had in the house. Learning, My sorry. personal first system, the one that I could play anytime that I wanted, was a technically a Sega Genesis. No, no, no. Game Gear. I had a Game Gear first, and then I got a Genesis like a little bit after that. Yeah. But um before there was like the for, video and stuff, I was like that? I said before there was the video and stuff, it was the back of the box, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh it was uh it was always for me, it wasn't just that, it was demos. It was demos, and I also had like cousins and stuff that would have like systems and stuff that would play games and i would see the games that they were having like oh that game looks really really cool or you know some of the more mainstream stuff that you would see like on tv or whatever like that but you wouldn't see any demos on like the nes games did you uh for nes games uh not particularly most of those was just uh it was kind of just box art but yeah, also yeah, yeah. the nes in the house was my mom's nes quote unquote yeah, oh, that's how yeah. she tell the story. Uh, so there was, uh, we had Super Mario Th Brothers 3, uh, Kirby's Adventure, original Super Mario Brothers, and every once in a while I would get like another a game or two for the thing, but it was just like something that was just like uh, a lot of used titles, was like new unboxed titles, so it was like the cartridge here, cartridge there type thing. 
Yeah, but demos didn't come out until when? Like, I want to say my first demo. No, 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 no. Yeah. not like demos. You're, you're thinking, demo you're thinking like demo. Yeah, demo disc. You're thinking the demo disc. I'm talking about like go to the store. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Play the game. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like demo disc. When did they come out? I'm trying to figure out. Think but of this, when oh, you pop back. All right, there we go. There we yeah. go. Yeah, uh, 95, 96 uh, for uh, for uh, like demo disc and stuff like that because it was a uh, PlayStation era. PlayStation slash. Um, I think I had a. I think I got one for like. The, uh, Dream PlayStation Dream slash Saturn say. era, I want to say. Yeah, it's like Saturn. Oh, I, I may had a. I may. I think I had like a Saturn one. Yeah, for Saturn. Nights. Saturn had. Saturn definitely had. Uh, like nights uh, in the dreams, I had. I might still have it. Uh, Saturn definitely had uh, demo disc. Um, but disc based uh, disc based systems was what caused yeah. disc based. Uh, Man, you guys that didn't grow up during the i the the electronic game monthly era where you would get those demo discs in like the mail and everything, that was the best because you could like try games out without even like, but you could just download them now, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, though, right? Um, I don't know you, but about you, but I would always like, I would steal the disc. I'm, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and say it. It's been past seven years. I would go into the store with a little pocket knife and steal the disc out the magazine, leave the mag. We don't condone thievery or stealing here on Wally Mob Gaming or on the Good Morning Gamers. Uh, if you feel like you have to steal or everything, get help and uh, don't steal. Um, speaking of people. <laughs> Stealing your expectations, Cyberpunk 2020 Long uh, Wolf, you played it, right? Yes, I played it on PC. The PC build uh, ran a lot smoother than the uh, console builds, but it still left a lot to be desired. Well, um, CD Projekt Red's uh, 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 one of the the major big heads uh, came out to say, "Well, uh, on yesterday's show, a Good Morning Gamer, I went through some of the many, 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 many bug fixes." In the game, but uh, this is what I have to say about the future of Cyberpunk 2077 and uh, some winter stuff in there too. Hey everyone, my name is Mark Kinginski. I'm the co-founder of Soda Break. When I started Soda Break 25 years ago, one of its founding principles was honest and direct communication with gamers. When Soda Break Red, the game development part of Soda Break was born, it added something important to that principle: the ambition to make the best games in the world. It became our mission and something that guided us up until now. Based on that legacy of genuine and honest communication, you've trusted us and pre-ordered our game. And despite good reviews on PC, the console version of Cyberpunk 2077 did not meet the quality standard we wanted it to meet. I and the entire leadership team are deeply sorry for this, and this video is me publicly owning up to that. Please, don't fault any of our teams for what happened. They all are incredibly talented and hardworking. Myself and the board are the final decision makers, and it was our call to release the game. Although, believe me, we never ever intended for anything like this to happen. I, bet. I assure you that we'll do our best to regain your trust. Now I'd like to tell you how the situation looked like from the inside. Cyberpunk 2077 is huge in scope. And I'm not only talking about quests or things you see at first glance. I'm talking about the multitude of custom objects, interacting systems and mechanics. In the game, everything is not stretched out over flat terrain where we can make things less taxing hardware-wise, but condensed in one big city and in a relatively loading-free environment. On its own, this is a challenge, but we made it even more difficult for ourselves by wanting to make the game look epic on PCs and then adjusting it to consoles, especially old gems. That was our core assumption. And things did not look super difficult at first. We knew the hardware got, yes, but ultimately, I think that time has proven that uh, we've underestimated the task. To give a concrete example and the main culprit, we had to constantly improve our in-game streaming system for all-gen consoles. Streaming is responsible for feeding the engine with what you see on screen, as well as the game mechanics. And since the city is so packed and the disk bandwidth of all is what it is, it constantly challenged us. Every change and improvement needed to be tested, and as it turned out, our testing did not show a big part of the issues you experienced while playing the game. As we got closer to the final release, we saw significant improvements each and every day, and we really believed we would deliver in the final day zero update. Now let's talk about the review process. We started sending our PC review keys in the first days of December. On launch day, December 10th, we hit the ground running with a really good start on PC. While not perfect, it's a version of Cyberpunk we are very proud of. At the same time, we're fighting for quality on all-gen consoles till the very last moment. And every extra day of us working on the Day Zero update brought visible improvement. 
This is why we started sending console review keys on the 8th of December, which was later than we originally planned. This all happened while working from home with all the challenges resulting from the COVID-related restrictions. A lot of the dynamics we normally take for granted got lost over video calls or email, and we took that hit too. Now I'd like to tell you about our plans for the future and present a path for Cyberpunk 2077 on consoles and PC. We have already released three hotfixes improving the game, but that's just the beginning. Our ultimate goal is to fix the bugs and crashes gamers are experiencing across platforms. Please expect bigger and smaller patches on a regular basis. The first update will be dropping within 10 days, and it will be followed by another, more significant one in the following weeks. We will, of course, continue to work on the game in future updates and improvements beyond that. Our big plans for supporting Cyberpunk in the long term did not change. As for the free DLCs, our initial plan was to deliver them just after the release, much like we did with The Witcher 3. We decided to focus on the most important fixes and updates first, and we'll be releasing the DLCs afterwards. Expect more information in the upcoming months. For those of you playing on next-gen consoles in back compatibility, you can still expect the free next-gen update for Xbox Series consoles and PlayStation 5 arriving in 2021. We are aiming at the second half of the year. I'd like to end this video by assuring you that we treat this entire situation very seriously and are working hard to make it right. The guiding principles of our company are still core to what we do. We still want to make amazing games and have an open communication with you, our players. For now, our immediate focus is to work hard on making sure you enjoy Cyberpunk 2077 regardless of platform. Beyond Cyberpunk, we have many plans for the future, which we'll share more about when we're ready. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. What do you think? As somebody who was an early adopter of Cyberpunk 2077 and uh, plays uh, CD Projekt Red games. Um, uh, I really believe that they really dropped the ball on everything that happened. Uh, it's good to see that them trying, they're trying to kind of sort of explain uh, uh, themselves and, and cover themselves up. Uh, what he was saying, one of the things I'm, I'm actually glad that he did say was uh, that he, he and the board of directors are the ones that, that messed up um and they're the ones that are responsible not the development team the development team actually was trying to tell them hey game's not ready please stop telling people that it's almost ready and then i forgot uh, one of the one of the marketing things was like yep the game's like right around the corner and the development team was like whoa it's yeah. not even close so then they had to go ahead and push it forward and release it so i'm glad today that uh that he's saying that basically the higher ups are taking responsibility for this um i'm i'm curious to see where they're going from this point uh as you can see on the screen right now we got uh more stuff for uh for cyberpunk 2077 coming up here soon uh the witcher is gonna have some uh some more stuff coming up for it uh, as well as the next gen so yeah they've got their there, um, so. i don't know if you've seen it it's their their um uh, witcher monster game it's like a uh uh not vr augment reality ar experience yep. where you'll see like monsters in the wild and stuff and we're gonna have a next gen update to the witcher 3 which i'm excited about because i'm still playing the game eight years later yeah i i, I plead i still have to beat the dlc but uh it kind of fell off for me a little bit uh, uh i i have to buy the the regular they they did something where they basically split up the regular edition and the collect uh complete edition so yeah. I played the regular edition all the way through and I was waiting for the DLC to come out because I bought it when it first came out. Uh, when you get the DLC and everything, then you can play from your save file through that one, right? Yeah. If you if buy you, if the com one, yeah. complete edition, if you buy the complete edition, it does not carry your save file from the regular edition because it's it's treated as its own separate game. So I was like, huh. I'm not beating the Witcher over again. Yeah, <laughs> that it, was a it, long game. It, and I did it, a it, lot of stuff in it. It said, yeah, it's a long game. It said, well, I think I bought them separately. I'm not sure, but it says on my Xbox version that it's the complete edition. But uh, like I said, uh, The Witcher, uh, it's my favorite non-fighting game pretty much ever. As For a game that I didn't even like when I first played it, turned it on, uh, it's, it's become pretty much one of my favorite, my favorite non-fighting games. And uh, I, I'll, I'll, hey, some improved graphics, I'll play it until The Witcher 4 comes out. Um, like I said, I'm, uh, so we were talking earlier and you were like, you were like, I don't, they got to show me fix the game do you think they will fix the game yeah nothing they'll fix the game uh cd project red uh, though this was kind of like a, a ball drop uh on their part 
they've been doing a lot of stuff to really try to uh, make up for things for the fans. That's just kind of what they do. So uh, I believe that they will, but only time will tell whether they uh, actually uh, uh, follow through or not. Yeah, and uh, they tried to like Pat, but you know, more more, more uh, games in the Cyberpunk series along with the free DLC and A. Hey, what you're for? It's <laughs> around the corner, Pro- probably about four or five years away, but you know, around the corner in that sense. Uh, they got a new team though, so we'll see. Um, good morning, FGC. Is it that time already? It is that time again. And uh, guess what, Lone Wolf? What? Guilty Gear. It, it's not coming out any soon. Uh, no, it's coming out soon. It's not coming out. It's not coming out. It's not coming out originally how soon it was coming out. It, it would have been here. It would have been almost here by now. It got pushed back, what, two months? I think their original yeah. date was in uh, April, March, March, April. So I would have been getting my hands on it any day now. But uh, but darn pesky betas, am I right? Gosh darn it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, as you see right here on the screen, uh, it looks like we're going to get a second open beta for Guilty Gear. Yes. Uh, the beta, uh, basically, they want to kind of sort of expand more on the issues they were having with uh, connectability and some of the lobbying issues. Uh, basically, what they're saying is uh, they uh, are going to do an open beta test er- uh, earlier um uh, a second beta test earlier, and they're shooting for maybe April ish. Um, yeah, the game comes out in June. But, I mean, unless it gets pushed back again, June is yeah. The, they're shooting the for they're game. shooting for early this month. Mm-hmm. Um, and attempts to try to further investigate the uh, issues that people are having with some of the servers and uh, lobbies, which there was a couple issues. I didn't really uh, face that many issues, yeah, but it might well, be trying to. It was it was like well, you would go up to the person and you would try to get a fight with them, but you couldn't get a fight with them. Um, or you would, so you had to put your, your character, your creative character, whatever the case is in like, I'm ready to fight mode, like standby mode. But then they would take you from the floor that you were on and bring you to the bottom floor where people weren't ready to fight you. So then they have to go find you because you would like disappear to the bottom floor once you would be like in ready stance. Right. So then you would go down to the floor to try to fight that guy. And then hopefully they, it would match up. But you could also do the thing where you would, um, be in standby mode, which uh, they'll put you in that bottom, but you would go into practice mode until somebody uh, wanted to fight you, whatever the case is. So most of the actual fights were good, but connecting. And then there's what's the difference between when you jump off the floor to casuals, which this is ranked. Sometimes we did that, the connection, it, it just took too long. Oh, and let's not even say, I don't know if you ever tried to, but um, you would press the wrong button and you would try to look at the guy's stats to see how many games he won and what character he plays. That would literally take about five minutes to load up. It was pretty, pretty AIDS, as Shadow Shell would say. Uh, but yeah, so it, it's like the game would almost freeze. You would almost want to turn it on back on off. So little things like that, definitely problems with the um, <laughs> uh, 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 Guilty Gears. And and basically uh, the way Arc System Works does their lobbies with their little avatars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, in this version, though, we do get to play as the uh, characters that were released. I believe that would be Eno and um, my guy with the uh, uh, with the um, Katanas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get those two in the character games. Um, and also they're saying that um, people who have PS5 pre-orders get a little extra day. Yep, they uh, they did that last time as well. Uh, they were or they tried to do that last time, but they were having so so many issues when the, the open beta uh, first initialized that they were like, "We're sorry, here's some extra time because we messed up." So uh, it's good that people that are uh, that are uh, uh, pre-ordering are going to get a little more incentive because they actually put money down for the game. Yep. So all online modes will be available, um, including uh, all chapters of the story mode as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, only for a console though. PC players will only get the um, the availability for them to play online. So they won't get the chapters and the, um, and the story modes. They don't get all the modes. PC players just get to availability to play online. But you know, good for PC players. Cause I mean, like, let's be honest. PC players are the problem, right? Uh, are they? I mean, in fighting games and we go, we just did a story about Tekken the other day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they had the, uh, uh, which I got to recheck on that to see how that's going. They read uh, the your you were able to rank up by the one yep. percent. They mode. they fixed that. They, Odds. they just with they last with the the last update that just hit when they uh, included uh, Lydia. They actually put in anti cheat stuff into the into the uh, patch. 
Yeah, but it's it's usually with everything being online, at least for the next two years. Uh, I'll say the the in the 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 after twenty twenty one, we'll see what twenty twenty two. Uh, we'll have to start doing some more open testing with the vaccinations and everything like that. Uh, there we could see some people winning games with just stupidness. With the modding community doesn't like really chop down, especially on. I know uh, modding is real big in the uh, first person shooter uh, mm-hmm. uh, games, but. In fighting games, it's like you can mod, you can have damage mods on there, uh, health mods, anything like that in the game. It's crazy what you can do. But um, I'm pretty sure a lot of the uh, reason why the mods, uh, the probably reason why uh, PC is not getting uh, all the modes open yet is because of things like that and them just wanting to test it. Because PC, from what I hear, is like really the most common denominator because you have PCs that play the game on a lower scale and PCs that play it on a higher scale. So they have the most um, range. I guess mm-hmm. of development for any other uh console what console well, they also you had to remember a lot of the stuff that they're building these games off of they're building it off of a pc so they have a pc build initially and then they basically fit fit or well, form fit it for whatever system that they're making it for yeah um i i do see that you know ps5 ps4 and of course pc will be able for the online and stuff like that and uh that's the bigger issue like if we look at street fighter 5 right um usually mm-hmm. when you're playing pc to pc pretty good you know pc to console is where where the problem starts to actually uh show its head so um i trust these guys trust our system works uh melty blood's a thing that they're making as well too right now so there's a lot of stuff coming out good for them and uh man if they get this right if they get this right because okay the damage in, okay in the last beta what did you see, think was like the thing we both agreed the beta was amazing, but for yeah. you, what was the thing that was like your main pet peeve? Uh, just uh, the figuring out how to connect with with players. That was basically the only thing that really that really bothered Online me that much. Uh, the lobby, the lobbying was a little weird. I got a hundred percent damaged uh, by a Potemkin. Um, from, that sounds about right. From a grab. That sounds about right. Uh, I, I, he, he did like a. I don't know if I whiffed something or it was a, a um, I, I want to say it was like a, um, uh, what do they call them? Uh, when, a, a, car, a car? I think it was a car grab. For the, for the, mm. Why does Potemkin have a car grab? But anyways, right? I because got, uh, because it, he's Potemkin. Potemkin's quite literally, I think he's the most, the like for damage, he's the most powerful character in the game. I got grabbed by Potemkin. I got hit into the corner. I got super grass break. And I was dead. So I mean, unless unless we're trying to move NBC two this thing, I think maybe the damage scale needs to go down just a smidge. I mean, I love it. I love high damage games, especially because you don't need a lot of combos when it's high damage games. So that's pretty cool. But like, hundred percent of one grab, and uh, I, I'm gonna try to put it out later on. There's a whole like, um, uh, there were apparently a lot of glitches in the last beta, and uh, I want to put those out. There's one glitch where you would do like a, a burst combo in the air, and then the um the 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 uh your your health bars would be down here. Oh, uh, that's not good. Yeah, there was another glitch where um you would do a burst of some uh you you would be about to lose, do a burst, and then it would say uh, double KO no matter what the power level was. Oh. Yeah, there was some there's some pretty crazy glitches in the game, so I hope they get those out. So it was a lot more than just getting the lobby together, but uh we'll see hopefully what in April they said, something like that. Mm-hmm. So po- well it, it's no attended uh, tentatively since it's coming out in, in a month June uh, now because it's April. Uh tentatively it should be they they're shooting for the beginning of the month, but no date. Yeah, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be a day one patch on June eleventh. More like. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us. I'm Ray K. I'm the loneliest wolf by choice. Uh, keep playing games. Uh, we're waiting for June 11th. Like it, it, it can't get here really soon enough. And uh, till then, be good. Play games. We out. Peace.